All right, you want to get yourself to the Cleveland Home and Remodeling Expo. It is next weekend, the 22nd through the 24th, out at the IX Center. We've got not only a four-pack of tickets for you, but $1,000 to Countryside Furnishings. They do custom pieces in Middlefield. That is at WMMS.com. So register to win that. Countryside Furnishings will be one of the many booths out at the Cleveland Home and Remodeling Expo. You can see what they do in person. HomeandRemodelingExpo.com for all the details. I will give you my last four tickets this week. Cleveland Home and Remodeling Expo. You're a DIYer. I'm sure they will have no shortage of ideas for you next weekend. So four tickets for you. Caller 10. Good luck. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. If you find yourself breathless with constant laughter, congratulations. Now, could you tell us what show you're listening to? It sounds fun. This is the Alan Cox Show. <laughs> On 100.7 WMMS. I'm going to be out in Brunswick tomorrow night for the last semifinal round of our March Mini Hoops Challenge with Bud Light. Bill and I have been doing a lot of these appearances. A lot of fun. Uh, He was back in Willoughby last night. He is going to be in Middleburg Heights tonight. Uh, And then we will have uh, the finals on the 23rd. Uh, So if you want to try to get yourself out to Vegas, because that's really the grand prize, is uh, whoever takes the whole thing is going to get themselves uh, $10,000. So if you want to get yourself out Uh, To try to compete tonight, Bill is going to be at the Islander in Middleburg Heights. And then tomorrow night, I'm going to be in Brunswick. And that'll be the last uh, semifinal thing. I'm going to be at Hot Shots in Brunswick. And then we'll have the finals next Saturday. An afternooner, we're going to do it on tap bar and grill in uh, Medina next Saturday afternoon. So Bill at the Islander tonight. Uh, I'll be at Hot Shots tomorrow from 5 to 7. And let's say you go... I don't give a rat's ass about that, Alan. I want to go see Bill on Saturday night. Where could they do that? Oh, they could go to Wild Oscars at the Akron Civic Theater. That is uh, right there in downtown Akron. Mm -hmm. And you can get tickets at BillSquire.com or AkronCivic.com. And you can come see me do some stand-up. It'll be a lot of fun. It's a cool little venue. It's It's a very nice, intimate room. They wanted to try something out there. It's their incubator is what they call that. Oh, really? In the business. It sounds nefarious. Yeah. More like an incubator of ideas and creativity. Exactly. I see. And if there's one thing that I have, it's ideas about being creative. <laughs> well, you, uh, <laughs> you're you incubating them all the time. Uh-huh. Uh, Cavs off tonight, but tomorrow night, an early-ish game, if you want to listen. It's a 5 p.m. tip-off. They're in Houston against the Rockets. Uh, pre-game coverage begins 30 minutes prior. Then they'll go to Indianapolis to play the Pacers on Monday, and then they'll be back home. On Wednesday, to play the Miami Heat. And then the Heat will be here, like a few days, uh, or they'll be in Miami, whatever it is. There's still some basketball to be played. Uh, Mary is out today. She is uh, doing stand-up in Minneapolis this weekend. And I don't know how quickly this is going to go into effect, but Minneapolis is getting out of the Uber and Lyft game. Saw this. I... Everyone who wants to complain about me not tipping, this is what you get. Okay. What? Draw me the connection there. Well, they were saying I'm cheap, but and the people were complaining about, you know, people being cheap and not making a livable wage. Well, they complained that they weren't making a livable wage, and Uber said, well, we can't support 15 an hour, so they are taking Uber and Lyft out right. of Minneapolis. They wanted to pay at the mere thought of paying their drivers That's more. That's all they wanted was 15 an hour. Lyft and Uber said, nope, we're leaving Minneapolis. Now, obviously, this is a boon to cab drivers, right? The taxi hacks have always hated Lyft and Uber, obviously, because it cut into their business. But Minneapolis, and they wanted to keep them there. The mayor of Minneapolis was vetoing this. The, the driver increase, the wage increase. The mayor of Minneapolis uh, is going to veto it because they want to keep those businesses there, obviously. And the city council voted to override the mayoral veto. 
right? Minneapolis is not some right-wing hotspot, by the way. Uh, Minnesota is a blue state. But that's a big deal. You know, but again, Lyft and Uber are companies that don't make money. They bleed money. I don't they've know never, how, though. Because they've never been profitable. Because they were awash in VC cash early on. What is but VC? Venture capital. Oh. So that's why when they had these initial ideas for Lyft and Uber funded, they were like, great. This is going to revolutionize blah, blah, blah. But it, it does seem like a good idea, and it's not like people don't use the it's product. It's a good idea on paper until you get to – but the reason that these companies work in their current iteration is because they don't consider the drivers employees. They're independent contractors, so you're on the hook for everything. But there's so, going to be a middle ground, man. What do you mean? There, but there, because you can't expect the the customer to provide all the costs for the the Uber, like it, it, well, already paying. The flip side of that coin is nobody's forcing you to sign up to drive for Lyft and Uber. You are doing this here. Here is how we run our business. If you'd like to join that mean and make right. some extra money, well, that's got nothing to do with it, though. It ain't about right and wrong. This is how the company operates. And it's a pretty good side hustle for a lot of people. But I think Lyft and Uber were like, this was never intended to be your main job. And kind of to their credit, these companies go, look, you know, we're down with a minimum, but we don't want to pay people $16 an hour to do this because they're sensibly getting tipped on top of that, blah, blah, blah. But it is funny when these companies are like, nope, we're pulling out. Now, this might not be the end of the road. You'll pardon the pun. This might not be the end of it. Could be a bluff. But they say, May 1, we're out. Lyft and Uber. Again, great news for cab drivers. But they're like, this law in Minneapolis getting passed, it's unsustainable for our business because these businesses are not making money. But I but. Someone's getting paid somewhere down oh, the yeah, line. Oh, yeah, the CEO and the stockholders. They're, they're yeah, of course. Millions of dollars. But they do so, that with they do that on the back of other people's labor. That's but, how everybody becomes a billionaire on the back of other people. But even still, fifteen dollars an hour is still not a livable wage. There, well, it's you not get, a livable wage. You it's get the fifteen dollars an hour, and then you, I think, you get money on top of that. They're, no, you the, get fifteen dollars, and then whatever tips you make. Yeah, yeah that's what I mean. And, yeah. and, and fifteen dollars plus tips is a livable wage. Not for a primary job, no. Well, right, but that's what they're saying. No, these, but if you're, these if you're, were never meant to be primary jobs. If you're getting fifteen dollars an hour and you're getting tipped, so that you're also making like another ten to fifteen dollars an hour, it should be, it should come out to be pretty livable. But then you also have the wear and care. It's just not a great job to have. But I guarantee you they're getting some type of tax break. They're they're milking the system in their favor for, oh, look at how many people we employ. So, therefore, we need this amount of tax breaks. But th- when it comes to paying their employees as a normal corporation, then they're like, oh, no, we don't have the money for this. I'm like, you're getting tax breaks for these people, but you don't want to pay but that's for how, these people. But no company wants to do that. Every company has one job, and that's just to keep it in the black. Stay out of the red. That is every company's only mission. And people can have very substantive and intelligent conversations about what that should mean. But a guy like Jeff Bezos becomes a multi, multi multi-billionaire on the backs of other people. Things that we pay for. We pay for the roads that the trucks are on. We pay for the the taxes in the local municipalities that give tax breaks when you want to build a giant Amazon warehouse or whatever. And they can cast it as a job creator, well, X, Y, and Z. But we pay for the roads. We pay for the local police and fire and all those local utilities mm-hmm. that take care of those companies. That The things we pay for are what guys like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk benefit from so you don't make that much money without doing it on the backs of the people who are working for your but company. You, you also got to think that people will protest in, in when, when you charge these astronomical fees. So say, uh, okay, Uber is going to pay the 15 an hour, then their wages are going to go up or the, the, the ride share is going to go up. So people are like, well, I can't afford this anyway, so I'm not going to use it. So it's pointless. Like you'll weed out the people that can't afford it. 
Um, so the business will be smaller, but you might get a, a steady flow of loyal customers. I don't know what the what the what, what the right answer is here. Because well, I don't know that there's a right answer because these companies go look. We want to stay here, right? We we employ people. We do these already. We've embedded ourselves, and we want to stay here. And I'm sure that there are a lot of employees that want the companies the to side stay. Hustle, yeah, right? there's people driving for Uber and Lyft in Minneapolis. Because, this sucks for them. Yeah, because there's people like me that will get to a point where I was like, okay, I could go without. Like, I'll, I'll just go without. I'm not gonna. I'm not in the business of trying to cheat people. And when I found out that my way of life was it was not sustainable for some people. Then I was like, okay, well, then I just won't use it. And I'm sure a lot of people will get to the point where they're like, okay, well, I'll take my risk on a DUI. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll take a risk then. It, you know, chances are they're probably not going to get me, um, but I'm not going to pay this, you know, $15 for, you know, a half a mile down the road. I'm not going to do that either. So I don't know. Bill, your thoughts? I it just. What? I mean, you're not. No, he's not even wrong. It's just the the way he says it is just so the way <laughs> the way he expresses yeah. his thoughts on yeah. things. Are, they're very unique no, to him. People will get that's to why point, I like his perspective. People will get to a point where they they just won't pay anymore. They they pay so much for everything. Well, you it is gonna it, if the they get rid of can't do everything. If they get rid of Uber and Lyft in this city, then I in Minnesota's a drinking town. The right. DUIs will go up. Like, it's just so funny how it, Uber's only been around for, like, in college, Uber was, like, just starting. I took, like, my senior year, I think I took my first Uber, and it was because the Rue wasn't co- the, our, our University of Akron bus system wasn't coming to our side of town. So we were like, I guess we'll Uber. Um, and now I can't imagine, like, not having it. I'm like, wow, cabs still exist? Like, there's still cab companies that are still around? I, I, I They got to be Ubering on the side. So if they were to take that away... I don't know what would happen. I mean, depending on where I am, when I'm home, I will always take a cab. Always. A cab? Yes, because they're- I don't even know one cab Because they're, well, you got a call here, but if I go home, you know, if I'm in Chicago or if I'm in New York or something, I'll always take a cab. Because why am I going to stand there and wait for a guy that I got in the app, you know? If I'm in Austin or something, I'm in safer. Yeah. How is it? Sa- I mean, a guy's car. Uh, well, no, a taxi. You don't know who the driver is. You it's don't a taxi. Have any, any background? It's a taxi. Anything. Yeah, his face is right a, on the thing. He's got a. He's got a city license. license yeah. He's with a taxi company. But it's I'm, regulated. Uber. You Uber. get a profile with Uber. This guy has done Dude. this many rides. You get his first and that, last name, his license. Right. Plate. They're, 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 real, right now. they're really vetting these people, aren't they? Well. Again. Every other week, there's a story about some Uber guy that shoots a passenger, blah, blah, blah. But all I feel I'm, like that's rare. All I'm saying, it might be. I'm just saying that the convenience of Uber over the years has convinced people that getting into another person's car is a good idea. And we've all done it. I'm just saying that taxi cab companies are companies, and they're regulated, and you got to get a taxi license, and you have to get the badge for your taxi, and some people buy their own taxi, and some people, you know— I would much rather if I if I can do it. So there's tons. I will always flag down a cab. Well, you, coming from Chicago, I could understand because that's a well. Cab that's what I'm town. saying. If this I'm in Austin, I understand. I'm just saying that like you can call a cab. I mean, you know, if you're somewhere that I used to do it all the time. I would just wherever I was, um, you walk to the nearest hotel. There's gonna be cabs out in front. Again, it's it's your right as an American to to you know do it. I've taken plenty of Ubers, but I've also had enough occasions where I had to friggin' flag the guy in to where I'm like, "You're looking at a map. How can you not see where I am?" I'm like on the phone with a guy telling him where I. Am. I'm like, "Why am I doing this?" Plus, I want to know what type of car I'm I'm riding in too. Well, you they tell you that. As a cabs are all cab. Cabs are all the same. They're like Crown Vicks. They're like you know. They were Crown Vicks. A lot of cabs now are Priuses. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Priuses or Dodge Challengers, <laughs> you know, some of them. But I, I don't mean, think you're getting a lot of Challengers. Uh, it's a two door. <laughs> but I drive. Yeah. <laughs> like, get in the back. My wife asked me yesterday if we could order two small blizzards off of Uber Eats. They were twenty two dollars before tip. Jeez. Well, again, that's just the that's convenience. The convenience yeah. yeah. Nobody's going like that's what. 
nobody's forcing you to order anything off of Uber Eats. So you're going to get a half-melted blizzard. Except his wife. <laughs> Uh, you know, are you going to get lukewarm French fries that cost you fifty dollars? Yep. So yeah, I don't know. It's pretty wild, but uh, I I was uh, that story jumped out at me because I know Mary is in Minneapolis this weekend. Yeah, people like Mary will get more friends if this goes through because they need more to, friends. Yeah, because people need a DD. They need someone sober. So she uh, doesn't got a car. She's huh? But she's in Minneapolis. Uh, for work. I don't think she's got a car with her. No, I'm just saying, in general, people like Mary will get more friends because everyone wants to Because people want to use them to yes. get... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Transactional over here. Yeah, yeah. That's how you get more friends. Yeah. No, there's nothing a, a sober person loves more th- than waiting for their friends to finish drinking so they can drive, drive them, them home. around. I will throw yeah. you a livable wage of $15. For no money. Yeah. <laughs> I will throw you $15. Right. No, I'll throw you some friendship. <laughs> My friendship's worth more than that. Mm-hmm. Worth its weight in gold. Hey, Chris. Yes. What's up? Okay, so my input is I have done all the different platforms, DoorDash, Uber Eats, Uber Lyft, all of them. I probably make more money than most people, and 60 to 75% of that is tips. So if Uber and Lyft started paying a flat $15 an hour, sign me up in a heartbeat. Right, but they but it, they want to leave it. Uh, they want to leave it contingent on tips because they're like, look, we can't. This is unsustainable for us as a business. Um, right, but the moment that they start paying a flat hourly wait rate, it becomes a W two job versus a ten ninety nine job, and then they start taking taxes out. Right, you're not an independent contractor anymore. Exactly. Yeah. So, I would go. I'm not going to say which platform I'm currently working for, but I average fifteen hundred dollars a week. Wow, good for you. Do you do they? Somebody told um, me that somebody told me that they do do background checks every year with those platforms. Is that true? They do. Okay, they do. I cannot drive for one in particular because of a misdemeanor I picked up when I was eighteen. Wow, it is a violent crime. But I still cannot, and that is the only charge on my entire record, and I cannot drive for that company. What are you, 21 now? <laughs> I am 28. <laughs> wow, okay. Oh, that's not that long ago, though. I was thinking okay. you were older than that. But it's still over seven years. Yeah. yeah. And most companies will still hire a felon as long as it's over seven years. Huh. That's when people get good again. But yeah. you're but, but that's you're, been so, seven years, so you right? Trust but you're you, so you're you're saying that you're making like six grand a month. Yep. Huh. Oh, good for you. What kind of car do you drive for the? Uh, Apparently a, a Rolls Royce. Bill. Uh-huh. No, a Hyundai. Just a Hyundai. Just a yeah. Hyundai. Yeah. Well, it's just I know it's a lot yeah, of wear John. and tear on your car. How how do those expenses weigh into what? Because uh, I mean, that's a lot. In the last. In the last four to five years, I am now on my fourth car. Wow. Yeah. So you're going through like but, a car a year. But it's all tax write-off because I use the car for nothing but business. Okay. Right. Hmm. So I don't pay for the cars. It's a tax write-off. That's the thing with the wear and tear, too. If you can focus on the wear, you'd be much better than if you focus on the tear. Because, man, I'm telling you what, there's such disparities between wear and tear. All right. Thank you, Chris. There's Chris who's out there stacking cheddar, driving for one of those platforms. And, yeah, there's a lot of stories like that, and there's other stories people are like, oh, I, blah, 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 like anything else. But if you are uh, sober and want to drive your friends around, <laughs> uh, then, uh, according to Poundcake, that's a great way to make new friends. Yeah. Is uh, just walk up to some drunks. Because I would think that people you were driving around would already be your friends. You're not driving new. You're not meeting new friends that way. Hey, you look drunk. Can I take you home? Every year for New <laughs> I'm sober. <laughs> Let's go. Right. Every year for New Year's, uh, there's like an acquaintance I have on my Facebook page. And they're like, hey, I'm going to be sober tonight. And if any of my friends need, just they'll give out their phone. Well, like, that's oh, nice. Are bold. That's giving nice. Giving out your phone number on Facebook. And they're like, call me. Well, that's me. silly. But yeah, that's... yeah, and they're like, your call friend, me. Your friends should have your phone number. 
Well, nothing. I said an acquaintance. Like, they're just on there. And I'm like, mm, I'll take it down just in case. I might need you. That's somebody desperate for New Year's Eve plans. They just want to make sure everybody's safe. I think they're just trying to make everybody safe. Come on. And get a bunch of phone numbers. <laughs> I'm like, it's nice, but. I'll text them like, hey, do you do this for free? And they're like, who is this? I'm, and I just don't text back. I just want to know. Who is this? <laughs> Means you're not in my I, phone. I usually text them. They're like, because I we're not friends. We're just acquaintances. I just happen to see that you, since you're going to put it out there, I just want to know. Is this a free service? And they're like, who is this? I'm like, that's not what I asked you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. I, I, you said that you would take someone home if they was drunk. I just wanted to know if that stands for everybody. <gasps> who is this? That's not what I asked you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Come first on. answer my question, and then I'll answer right. yours. If one, clearly, one of your Facebook friends if you is either public or private. Either way, you put it out there. So I'm just answering. I don't think that's too much to ask that they answer your question first. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you put it out there. I didn't ask you to do that. You say you're about to drive me home. I just have to know who this is. But are you going to drive me home if you find out who it is? Like they say, yeah, and then they find out and they go, no, <laughs> right? no thanks. Not Cody. Oh, no, God, no. 